Last week, Craig got a free motorcycle from a stranger in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it had not ran in over 3,000 years. And despite all odds, oh no, and all the naysayers, this is even more almost impossible. He got it to run and smoke out the entire neighborhood in the process. But now he's got to ride this rusted out deathmobile on the world's most dangerous highway, the Killinator. That's not what it's really called, but it does have a lot of potholes and it's pretty awful. But before Craig can do that, he's got to fix this, 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 and definitely this, and get a drink of water, and go to the bathroom, and he's probably has to eat something somewhere in, the, in between there. So as you can see, there's still a ton of work to get this thing ready for the road. Getting it running was one thing. Now, we just have more work to do. As you notice, there's no gas tank. The gas tank was completely rusted out, so we have to improvise a gas tank. We don't have any front brakes. The tires are a little iffy, and we're missing the bracket for the throttle cable. Now, that's a really important piece, and what that does is it actually holds the throttle cable in place so that when you twist the throttle, things move and it works. So we're gonna have to figure that out as well. There's also a bunch of other stuff that we need to do to get this thing ready for the road, most of which we're just gonna act like we never saw. So we're gonna tackle the two obvious problems first, the gas tank and the throttle cable linkage. Those are two things that without those, we are definitely not putting any miles on this bike. Once we have that done, we'll see what happens. So I got out my trusty tool pouch and started doing what I do second best, wrenching on stuff. Can't forget to tighten up those carburetor boots because an air leak could mean the death of this bike. A little gas in there. And with a little whiff of the old fire spray, some throttle twisting and a prayer, it was back up and running, getting me excited for this ride home. It's idling. Hey, look at that, magic. Dan, come here and look at my throttle bracket fix. Wait, you fixed it? I fixed it. <laughs> Not for a zip I can't fix. <laughs> oh man, hot dogs. Ain't a mosquito around. Now I feel pretty good. Had to get, look, excitement built up this morning. We have the throttle cable kind of fixed. Just don't tell my mom I did that. And now uh, gas tank. We're gonna put a gas tank on here. Hopefully we can make something work. We're gonna take some laps around this parking lot before we hit the open highway. All right, Craig, let's see your gas tank fix. It better be a gas tank. Oh my gosh. You'll be happy, Dan. It is an actual gas tank. The good. Well, let's see here. <laughs> there, throttle still works. Do you have any Honda parts you can throw on it? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, blasted. Rick, what are you reaching for? I'm, I'm trying to get my straps. <laughs> uh, <hi>. <laughs> <laughs> Mama didn't raise no dummy. <laughs> tank straps. The only straps I use when strapping down a tank, obviously. I kind of don't want to mess up this tank. We need to don't want to mess it up. It's messed up. No, it's not. This is a perfectly patina DT250 tank. Ha! <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I just need a zip tie to hold that all together. So far, so it's good. beautiful. <laughs> Here's the deal, guys. I've been doing this a long time. Don't do this at home. There's six million things wrong with this whole thing, but I'm a trained professional. Or at least that's what my W2 says. But no, really, guys, like, be safe when you do this. Okay. Now we need some fuel line. Oh, wait a minute. I don't even know if I need fuel line because there's a line right here. Look at this, Dan, look, that fits right on there. Craig, something feels wrong. After everything that happened yesterday, too many things are falling into place today. Hey, you need a win every once in a while. All right, let's close this because the air filter was gone. The air filter is a foam filter. That's been rotted away for years. So I cleaned out the air box and none of those pieces got sucked up into the carburetors. Oh, we gotta put these side panels on because it just looks horrible without them. I'm so excited to try to ride this thing. Let's see here, put that on there. We should also cut these zip ties because... So they're not flapping around scratching you? Well, yeah, we just don't wanna look like a bunch of hacks. I don't necessarily trust this oil injection system, so I'm mixing my fuel, bypassing the, the oil injection. These systems are actually really solid and it'll probably work if I purged it out and whatever, but we're missing the cap for the oil tank and time and all that stuff. Bypassing that, putting oil right in the tank because we want to ride. Now, I don't know if this tank actually holds gas or if the petcock works, but... You were so proud of this tank. All right, what do we got here, fellers? Gas on. Okay. What is that other black hose that's hanging out there? This one? Yeah. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. You don't know what that hose is? This one? Yeah. No, it's probably a van or something. That, that might have had a vacuum operated petcock on. Oh, okay. 
I don't know, we'll see. So far it hasn't stopped me from doing anything I wanted to do, so I'm not gonna worry about it at the moment. <laughs> Squeaky brakes, so the marks are good. I don't think he's going to live. <laughs> Okay, obviously it's not running great, but it's running good enough for us to put some miles on it. I'm excited. How old does it stop? Slowly. <laughs> Did you figure out what that hose does yet? Nope. All right, hopefully we don't find out later violently. We should be all right. We got the two main things sorted out. That was getting a gas tank on it, getting that throttle cable bracket on, handle that with some zip ties and what ratchet straps and whatnot. The rest we're just gonna act like we don't know about. <laughs> it's horrible advice. What do you guys say? Let's ride. Let's ride. And so I set out on my 300 mile journey home on this extremely questionable bike. Here we go, and we're off. Oh man, this is gonna be a fun ride. Boy, this thing is uh, really fluctuating on the idle. It really wants to climb and hang on the high idle. And what that means is it's running really super lean, which makes sense because there's not an air filter in it because that was gone. We have turn signals, we have lights. Guys, I can't believe this bike's running. We'll see how long it runs. <laughs> so much fun. I gotta say, I'm a fan of two strokes. There's just something about getting on an old two stroke motorcycle, an old two stroke street bike that is, it's just so much fun. And if I can just keep it from blowing up, we'll be good. What a gem. Oh boy. Oh boy. Gotta stop, gotta stop, gotta stop, gotta stop. Gotta stop, gotta stop, gotta stop. I can't stop. This, These brakes do not hold me on this hill. At all. My tachometer stopped working. There's a thing called cover the clutch. And whenever you're on a bike that's sketch, you always wanna cover the clutch. And what that means is keep your hands on this clutch and if anything starts going awry man you just grab that thing for all it's worth and hopefully it'll get you out of trouble i can't stop i can't i'm all on brakes that's full brake i got i gotta do something all right, we are literally less than a mile into this trip. And if you know anything about Pittsburgh, this city was built on a hill. It's all a hill, everything's downhill. So we came down the first big hill and the brakes didn't stop me. Uh, they barely slowed me down. So I gotta do a little finagling here because that's not gonna work in a city full of hills. I think what we're gonna do our first step is we're just gonna tighten up the rear brake a little bit, see if we can get some more action out of it. And if that doesn't do it, we're gonna have to take more drastic measures. Yeah, just tighten it down. It's that easy? We're just gonna take this adjuster nut here and we're gonna turn that in a little bit and now hopefully that'll give me a little more pressure on the brakes one more spin for good measure there we go and bike is not dragging yet so let's take a spin here and see if that's any better oh it feels better already oh yeah i can lock them up now okay game on Oh man, dude, that would have been bad. So what I had to do to get out of that situation is I just shut the bike off. I had it in first gear, and then I used the clutch to just get me into that parking lot so I didn't hit this corner without any brakes. That hanging idle is an issue, but we'll get through that. So now that my first brush with death is over, I decided it was time to go for round two and really test what this bike can do. Okay, so our first stop on this epic journey journey is Canton Avenue. Canton Avenue is the steepest street in the country. And here we go. Yeah, I'm doing it. Wow, I'm getting some funny looks up here. 
Our goal was to take the bike up the steepest road in the country, but I didn't really consider what was gonna happen when I had to come back down the hill not having front brakes. Oh my God. You're squeaking Dude. again. This is awesome. This is sketchy. All right. <laughs> we made it, we didn't die. Now, for my next trick. We just conquered the steepest hill in the country, up it and down it, that's both ways. And that was exhilarating. This is gonna be a fantastic trip. Oh man, we just cruising. Oh man, we're gonna go through a tunnel. That is awesome. Man, I hope it doesn't break down in the tunnel. Hey, if it breaks down in the tunnel, just get up behind me and push me the rest of the way through. Oh wow, look at this. We go under a tunnel and then over a bridge. Hey, there's the stadium. That's where the sports ball teams play. There's the river. This is three rivers here. Yeah, I, a big old bar. Big old In bar. Oh no, another tunnel. Squirrel Hill, let's get squirrely. The way this idle's hanging, it's almost like cruise control. I haven't been on the throttle for a while and I'm still going 50. So the idle's hanging because it's like super lean. And that's just gonna cause a hanging idle and a high idle. Oh, this, this is sucking vacuum. I bet you I can, if I close this hose off down here, I think it'll run better. Talking about that hose from earlier? Yeah. Oh, cool bridge. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What's uh -oh. happening? I don't know, I might be running out of gas. Oh no, this thing's shutting off. Okay, it's I'm shutting I'm off? Out, I'm out of gas. Okay, just try to get it across the bridge. Yep. I got it on reserve, and we're back up and going, but we're gonna need to find a gas station. Wow, that was, that was close. I didn't want to run out of gas on that bridge. That would have been bad. Disaster averted, Craig. Ooh, should we run V-Power Nitro? That just makes sense. I don't know, I think we're just gonna run this. So what's the deal here? I got a two gallon tank-ish. Oh shoot, I hope I left enough room for oil. We'll see what happens. Two gallons. Glug, 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 glug. Whenever I mix right into the tank like this, I always turn my petcock off because the oil has a tendency to migrate right to the bottom. So you turn your petcock off, stop that, shake it up good, and then turn your petcock back on. Oh man, I can't fit anything else in there, that's for sure. Okay. So what I learned on my journey is this is in fact a vacuum hose, so we probably have a vacuum leak. Quick fix, we're gonna fold this over on itself and zip tie it like that. Nailed it. All right, now the bike's gonna run amazing, no more problems. None. All right, shake this up. Oh boy, I got gas spilling out. Turn that on. Hit the road again, Craig. Man, that started right up. <laughs> I barely pushed the button. It's getting better. Yeah, it is. And with another tank of gas mixed up, we hit the road. And the bike is running better than ever. I can't tell if I'm getting extremely lucky with this one or if it's the beginning of the end. And you two-stroke guys know what I mean. A dollar car wash. Guys, stop wash my truck. Oh, I love these dancing guys. Jerky, we should stop in for jerky at Steel City Jerky. Featuring jerky, but today only. Guys, this just goes to show, this thing has been sitting for 37 years in a garage. What I gather is the fellow that owned it, bought it new in 75, 
And then somewhere in the mid 80s, started having a family and the bike just sat. And it sat for 37 years. Stories like this are all over the country. Bikes like this are all over the country. You guys, you gotta find yourself one of these bikes and dig it out of that garage or out of that barn and get it running. I'd probably spend a little more time getting it ready for the road than I did, but this just goes to prove like you can do it. Turned out to be a great day, fellas. The rain held off. We got skies of blue, clouds of gray slight breeze i got a wedgie now just to be clear so everybody's on the same page i did the exact bare minimum to get this bike to start and run and then ride it like the bare minimum tell me what you would have done different in the comments try it number 19 the pickleball club <laughs> that's funny power and I can't tell if it's because we're going uphill. I don't know if this thing's gonna idle. Now it's like idling low. Uh-oh. Come on. Greg, you doing okay? Yeah, the bike's not running as good as it was. I don't know if I'm experiencing uh, the beginning signs of a soft seizure, but we're gonna keep running it until it doesn't run anymore. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not quite running as well as it was. Come on, girl. I am definitely losing power. Come on. Greg, that smells great. Uh -oh. Maybe you just need to burn some more oil off. I don't know. It, it feels almost like it's getting a little tight in the motor. It kind of feels like I'm down the cylinder. Let's find a spot to pull in. Maybe we'll check spark plugs, see if that'll tell us something. Uh-oh. I'm losing all power here, fellas. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, shoot. Okay, we're going to turn in here. Whoa. Something's going on. I don't know, but it it's definitely... Oh, boy. That's looking like it's uh, pretty hot. We may have roasted a cylinder. What does that mean? It means uh, we, we we burned up the motor. Let's uh, tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna let this cool down for a minute and then uh, I'm gonna pull out the spark plugs and we're gonna see what we have going on. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, fellas, as you can see, we got some smoke coming out of the one exhaust pipe. It's for the right cylinder. And look at this. Look, we got oily spooge here. Oily spooge? Oh, we got oily. We got oily and that is dry. What does that mean? Well, it means it's not oily is what it means. We're gonna pull the, we're gonna pull the spark plug out though, see what we can see. I was really losing power. Uh, it was definitely down at least a cylinder. Almost started feeling like it was getting a soft seizure so that the pistons were just starting to get tight on the cylinder walls. I don't know, we're gonna see what, we're gonna, I don't know. Oh boy. What happened? That is- It's a charred? That is lean as can be. That's starting to burn. Okay, well, I see the problem. What? There's a hole in the top of our piston. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. We got a hole in the top of the piston, and that was probably caused when I was heading up that one big uphill. And once the plug starts nibbling away at the top of the piston and creating little imperfections, those little imperfections are thinner and just get hotter and hotter and hotter. Made a hot spot, blew a hole through the piston. Unfortunately, now we had molten aluminum going down into the motor. We are dead in the water right now, guys. Dang it. I was really having fun riding this bike. So that's it, fellas. That's the end of this ride, unfortunately. And that's a bummer because I was really having a lot of fun. But we have a hole in one of the pistons. And I think we have a hole in our gas tank because it's dripping gas on this side. Fortunately, we got to call it. We got to pull the plug. But you know what? I'm calling this a victory. We dug this bike out of a garage. It was sitting for 37 years. We got it to run. And we rode it over 50 miles to where we're at now. That's a win. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. We're having a lot of fun. Don't forget to subscribe and check out this video right here. I know you're going to love it.